What's up YouTube and welcome back to Homebrew Subaru. Today is going to be all about cylinder heads. I am basically going to show you how I make this end up looking like this. We're going to take everything apart, clean everything up, lap the valves, install some new valve seals. So first things first is to actually take apart the valve train and start splitting this upper cap so I can get the camshaft out. I was shaking now pictures of us I never realized what I have lost Now I know it and it is so insane How I treated this like a game So with the rocker assemblies removed and the cam cap and cam shaft basically left with just the cylinder head with the valves and springs still loaded in it i am going to unload everything i'm going to show you the first one i'm going to walk through and then the rest i'll do on a time lapse this uh, valve spring compressing kit that i have is the ultimate kit for doing for removing valves out of a cylinder head it, just the size of it will wrap around any head and then having adjustments on both ends just means that you can really put this tool where you need it to actually compress the spring and get the retainers off. Once you decide which size depressing tool that you need, you just kind of attach it to the tool and you can rest it on the end there. The opposite end is going to push right on the face of the valve. I'll show you in a second, but just sitting that on there and basically just threading it in until the other end of it reaches the face of the valve. And then all I'm going to do is start cranking in on this end. And as long as that stays relatively centered, doesn't really matter. And keep on threading this in. Eventually over here on the other side, though there's going to be two little keepers in on the top here. And once they start to get a little loose like that, you can just take your magnet and just fish them right out of there. It's kind of nice. The, uh, depressing bit gives you a nice opening here nice great big window so that you can get in there nice and easy and once the keepers are removed we can just back the tool off and it will relieve tension off the spring and release the retainer spring push your valve through it'll just pop right out of the other side keep your valves retainers and springs all together Alright, so all of the valves have been removed, all of the valve seals have been removed, and all of the gasket surfaces have been cleaned up. We're ready to start lapping valves. We want to make sure we lap the proper valve to the proper seat. And basically, intake valves generally stay a lot cleaner than exhaust valves do. They're always being washed with fuel, fresh fuel flying down onto them. Uh, but the face of it is obviously carbonized quite a bit, and I'm going to take the all the valves to the wire 
to the bench grinder and the wire brush just to clean off all that carbon just to give you an example of the exhaust you can see how much carbon actually builds up on it backside and it'll actually fill into the margin get to the point where it's a possibility the valve won't close all the way and you actually get a little bit of a leaking valve and and that's generally what happens we got our valve all cleaned up looks really good you just want to take a little bit of this valve grinding compound and just dab the edge of the valve into the compound don't need a whole lot of it you just want enough to coat the margin of the valve not make a mess now these uh, lapping tools they do kind of suck to be honest and I've been meaning to buy something better but I just figured I wouldn't be doing a lot of cylinder heads anymore uh, but first we're just going to drop the valve into its proper spot give a good press on this guy and then a little twist a little tap a little twist a little tap you can hear the grinding compound working and as that noise thins out that means the compounds moved away from the from the actual seat and margin and the tapping pulls the compound back into the area that needs to be ground you can hear that change again you can see the tool doesn't like to stick on working with it a lot better yesterday on the other head You can spin the valve right around, work all the areas evenly. And you can see that nice silver line going around here. And that's our freshly ground surface. And then there's a little comparison between the lapped one on the left one that hasn't been done on the right you can see a little bit of roughness right in here you can actually feel it with your finger So we have all the valves cleaned up, all of them, but one installed. And I left out this one valve seal, just so you guys can get an idea of how they're put in. 10 mil socket actually goes right over top of them and protects the actual seal and the spring inside and allows you to hit down on top of the, the metal casing. Really just to start it, usually you can just push these on with your finger. And once you uh, kind of get it on there, just some light tapping with the hammer, of course, with the uh, socket end and not the uh, extension end. And then I like to get eye level. Just to make sure it's on perfectly straight. And then I'll take just the tiniest little dab of grease to put in there. Don't really need to. Oil is fine. And, and applying some oil to the actual stems of the valves after you're assembled is fine as well before uh, putting on that valve seal you do want to make sure that your 
spring seat is in place they can actually fall off and I did have one of these fall off while I was working just line up the uh, center of the retainer with the stem of the valve make sure it comes through the center and then just uh, crank this down just to the point that the stem pokes through about a quarter inch or so it's kind of hard to judge and if you have it out the retainer out too far the keepers will not go in and if you have the retainer in too far the keepers keep falling out and become a pain in the ass I'm just resting in there and just slowly back off the comp compressor maybe a little bit slower than that because I just had one of these things jump out on me and the keepers have a taper to them you want to make sure that they're in there the right way there we got all the valves in so now that I have this all cleaned up and the valves are all installed we're gonna flip it over and start applying some art gray RTV along all the gasket surface where it needs to go this rear cap needs to be cleaned up and silicone wrapped around it to put on the end here and then uh, the camshaft will lay in the cap will go on the rocker assemblies actually line up the cap then the rest of the bolts go in it's you know there's quite a bit of torquing to do there's a lot of bolts to put in and you want to pay very good attention so I'm basically just going to uh, mark in the time lapse of what's what and how much torque it is and if uh, you guys have any questions you can always leave them down in the comments let's get to it Okay, so both heads are all torqued together and ready to go. I was unable to actually put the metal pulley onto uh, bank one. I have a metal pulley on my other engine on the passenger side or the bank one. And I think it must be off a 2.2 liter and maybe the 2.5 uh, cam sprocket is just that much different. So I'm gonna have to leave the plastic pulley on there. Uh, next thing is bolting them onto the block. I have my head gaskets here. As you can see, they're different colors for whatever reason. Normally would cry about something like this, but I'm just getting too old in my life to cry about stuff. The other thing is, you know, a lot of people are extremely opin opinionated about Felpro Permatorque gaskets online. I've never had an issue with them. Done dozens of engines. The one time that I did have head gasket failure with these gaskets, I was literally boosting an NA motor to 10 PSI and had head lift. Now, believe it or not, in the package with the blue head gasket and not the black head gasket, it explains that the traditional blue color has been replaced with the black one because of a supply demand kind of issue and that they'll work the exact same way. But they probably should have included this in with the black one because, you know, they've been blue for 20 years.
There is the long block all back together. Both sides have been torqued up. Something I wanted to note was I did reuse those head bolts. A lot of people think those torque to yields are not reusable, but if you oil those washers and threads, you can reuse them no problem. I'm going to leave the timing belt and adjusting the valves for the next episode. I have a lot of cleaning and painting to do, get that intake manifold and those brackets all cleaned up, and then uh, it'll all to go, go back together and have this thing finalized. Now I have been taking my time and being a little bit particular on what I'm filming. I just wanted to film as much as I could and put in as much time lapses as I could. And that way you guys can actually see how much work is involved. But if you like this video, definitely give it a thumbs up. And if you're new here and you haven't already, please consider hitting that subscribe button. Leave your questions and comments further down below. And I'll see you in the next one. For fuck's sakes, man. <laughs>